Greetings, sisters and brothers in Christ. The title of our message this day is God's Love Song to You. And let us pray. Oh God, we begin our worship in the name of the one who created us, the one who redeems us, and the one who comforts us and sustains us. Amen. And so, sisters and brothers, our first reading for this day is very connected to the gospel, so we will hear it. It is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the fifth chapter, verses one through seven. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes but it yielded sour grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard, what more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done for it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild sour grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the people of Judah are God's pleasant planting. God expected justice but saw bloodshed, righteousness but heard a cry. Here ends our first reading. And our gospel parallels this. Uh, our holy gospel for this day is according to St. Matthew, chapter 21. Listen to another parable, Jesus says. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son, sent his son to them saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, this is the heir, come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce of the harvest at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you 
and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now let us pray. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So, every time I hear this, oh, again, the title of our message for this day is God's love song to you. And every time I hear this passage, I cannot help but think of um, a professor, an old Jesuit named Phil King, who taught at Boston College um, Old Testament prophets. And when I was in divinity school, I cross-registered and took this Old Testament prophets course with Phil King. And the thing that has stayed with me all these years is when he spoke of this love song in Isaiah 5, he said, you know, most of Jewish um, verse is chanted or sung, and that was a way people could um, carry it with them and and oh, also we remember the words so much better when we sing them right so he said this probably truly was a song a love song from God to the people of God from God to you and to me but it's an aching um, kind of lament type of love song and um, I, I just kind of ponder what the melody might have been. I imagine it in a minor key, um, kind of showing that aching and that longing of God. Because it says God created us, right, to, um, to live our lives fully, bearing fruit in this world, being the people God created us to be, being that light to the nations, that light to all people. And, um, and, and in this parable, this love song, right, the world is the vineyard and God is the, the one who tends to this vineyard and who did everything in God's power to, to pick the choicest fruits, you know, to pick the very best strains of vines and to plant it and cultivate it and protect it with this fence and a watchtower and all of this did everything. What more, it says, could God do than what God did? And when God looked for us to bear fruit like these luscious um, grapes to bring joy and life to others, Instead, it says, we yielded sour grapes, sour grapes. Think of someone you love who, you know, as a parent, of course, I think of my three children, but think of someone you love who, you know, that, um, that you would do anything, absolutely anything for, and, and how you've tried to give them every opportunity to to grow and thrive and succeed and to you know shine their light in this world and think of the aching longing you feel when they go down the wrong path and when they just do not bear that fruit and live their lives to the fullest so 
this is a love song about that. And then it says, so what more can I do? God says, and it says, I tell you what I do. I will remove the hedge. I will let the wall be trampled down. I, it, it will not be pruned or hoed. It shall become overgrown with briars and thorns. And that is why I'm sitting in this spot. Um, I don't know what they call this spot in the day of its fullness, right? But this spot, these ruins, we just call them the ruins. Uh, they're condemned. There's a, a half, a fence half hanging. It's all overgrown. It's crumbling to the ground. It's just in shambles and ruins, right? And apparently, originally, it was the stables for this beautiful estate. And still today, it's it's in one of the most beautiful spots in all of Newport, right on Brenton Point right in the other direction that direction is Brenton Point where, where cars sit to watch the sunset every day and right here um, where there are beautiful walking paths are these ruins these shambles but if we're truthful we can think of people whose lives are like this who who you know had have such potential and such talents and such gifts but whose whose lives have just crumbled and turned into shambles and indeed when we know people like that in our lives our hearts ache and we can hear that aching longing in God's love song to them perhaps to you this day now Jesus, um, I never thought of this back when I was in divinity school, but when Jesus in today's parable sings, speaks of this vineyard and this vineyard owner who planted this beautiful vineyard and put a hedge around it and a watchtower and all of that, his audience, especially in this Gospel of Matthew, the audience, um, it's Jews who had become Christian. So the audience would um, be this love song from Isaiah 5 would immediately come to their minds when they heard this parable that Jesus was telling about the vineyard. But Jesus gives it a new twist because this parable, this comes right after the Palm Sunday story. So this, um, Jesus tells this parable during Holy Week, he is very soon, just later this very week, he will be crucified. So of course he is that um, son that God sent to this world to um, gather the fruits, the fruits that we are supposed to be bearing in this world and sharing with others. And, and Jesus, I'm sure, at, at the end of his life in ministry, is also aching and longing for those he loves, for you, for me, to, to get it and to stop living in, in this broken shambles and to be those choice vines bearing fruit in this world. God longs for us to bear. In that same class, in that same lecture on Isaiah 5, that professor, Jesuit professor Bill King said that the message of all the prophets in the Hebrew Bible and the message of Jesus too, right, is that he said we cannot say we love God and treat other people like crap. That's exactly what Phil King said, and I was shocked that he would even use the word crap. But it's so appropriate. Um, and he said, you know, God desires um, fruit, good, healthy grapes of life, and you have yielded sour grapes. 
and he talks about when I came, you were my pleasant planting and I expected justice but saw bloodshed. I expected righteousness but heard people crying. And so the shambles, the, the ruins are that, that we're to live lives that uh, show our love for God and our love for one another and our love for others, especially those little ones, those who do not have justice in this world. And when we don't live in that way, when we say, oh, I love God, I love God, and treat other people like crap, as Phil King says, then our lives are going to be like this. They're going to be a shambles. They're going to be ruins. This Wednesday was um, was St. Francis Day. And St. Francis said, preach the gospel at all times. If necessary, use words. Um, and that parallels what it means to like bear fruit. I love that image of bearing fruit because it's not like we're doing all this stuff ourselves. We're doing these good works. We're doing these works of justice. No, we're just being who God, the vineyard, uh, the vine grower, the, the gardener, we're just being, we're just living our lives in communion with with God, that main vine, and just letting nature take its course, just being the people of God. God who sings this love song to you, to me, but also to all those that you do not treat with love. God's love song is that you truly will hear the message of God's love for you, but then will let that love bear fruit in your lives, in your life, so that you can share that love of God with others, especially those who most deeply need it. Earlier in Matthew, Jesus said, you will know a tree by its fruit. When people look at your life, what kind of fruit are you bearing? Are you bearing fruits of light and God's light and love and justice? Or when they look at your life, do they see sour grapes? This day, may you hear God's love song for you, and may you bear God's fruit of light, of love, of justice. Amen. And now, May that peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, fill your hearts and souls and minds and lives with Christ, that love poured out for this world. Amen.